Hey, this is a, a rather nice old oscilloscope. Uh, it's a Tektronix oscope, and I have done a video on this before. Um, and it basically, I wanted to change some of these lamps in here. These lamps are little filament bulbs because this dates back from the 1980s. A really nice, smartly made piece of equipment and incredibly expensive in its time, but now kind of obsolete. Um, uh, digital oscilloscopes have kind of taken over. But this one does have a, a digital storage part to it, although it only does one trace. I still like the construction. But being old, it has some problems. So some of these lights, so there's actually got a couple of other problems with some of these had gone out. And I discovered you can actually change the little lights to LEDs these days if you pick up. In fact, this one is ideal. This is a little 12 volt LED, white LED, and it's also a warm white, so it can replace the um, filament lamps and look pretty acceptable. You just have to angle it slightly because obviously LEDs are a little bit more directional than a bulb. Um, so anyway, I was doing all that. There was another fault I had I was trying to deal with to do with how it chops the two channels, the input channels. But the power supply died on me and this had originally had a power supply fault uh, but so it's kind of reappeared uh, and I'm now trying to figure out how the power supply, what the problems are. I've got all the manuals for it, I've got the user manual and I've also more importantly got uh, the large service manual with all the circuit diagrams and everything in it and that's really helpful. It's almost impossible to fix this without that information. But it is very elusive. I've tried it down to into the power supply, the switch mode power supply in these, uh, but it's being very difficult to flush it out properly. Okay, this is just to uh, uh, try and simplify the power supply as a block diagram. It's, it's slightly different to how modern uh, inverters are made, but uh, this gives a kind of overall view. Basically, I have mains, rectified mains, the same as you would have in any. Um, switch mode power supply. Uh, the interesting thing here is this is a first stage inverter. It's very low power. It just starts the oscillator. It doesn't start automatically. It needs this start from a UJT uh, unit junction transistor circuit which will give a pulse if there's no oscillation occurring here to start this into its switch mode operation. Uh, on top of that we only have uh, an over voltage protection circuit so if the voltage goes too high it will then shut down this inverter. Um, this feeds a resonant circuit for, into a transformer so we have a, a sine wave current going through this transformer uh, rather than a, than a flyback arrangement. Uh, then the outputs of this are rectified for the power supplies for the scope and there are many of them and quite unusual voltages so it would be difficult to replace this power supply with something off the shelf. Particularly also there's a high frequency output goes straight in to the HHT voltage supplies for the CRT. Um, then there's a bit of control logic uh, which feeds back into the, the, the power supply, so with power goods and regulation on a 108 volt pin. Uh, with the, the logic then will control a driver IC which is a custom Tektronix chip which is a bit of a problem as well. Uh, and this output of this chip actually controls the, the inverter not by the uh, driving the transistors but actually loading the one of the coils in the transformer so actually quenching the transformers oscillation which is a kind of unusual way of doing it so this is all kind of operating when we get when i get a fault with this i tend to have no start on the oscillator here at all. Uh, this circuit is normally working, but what's happened is one of the transistors on the coils has gone uh, a short sort of base uh, emitter or emitter collector, and therefore it automatically quenches that inverter and it won't start. So nothing blows, it just stops working. But why the failure on the transistors here is a bit of a mystery, or sometimes the protection diodes go. Uh, and of course, being a switch mode power supply, you can't put a scope probe on it. You have to put insulation transformers and variax on it so you can then do checking on it. So it's been a real pain. Fortunately, it comes with the, um, I have the manual for it because working in such a large piece of kit without any information is rather tricky. Uh, and it has all the diagrams and circuit layouts. So the uh, switch mode power supply has basically three boards, two of which are shown here, uh, 
where it becomes a little bit complicated is this IC does all the uh, control uh, for protection. But the fault occurred, the thing just went dead, no supply at all, no lights and no fuses blown. Uh, and it wasn't starting up. Normally the switch mode will try and start. So the only parts to do with starting were these two devices here, which kick this little coil uh, and this transformer into a pulse because you have a supply voltage here on and here on these rails which are from these capacitors from the mains but without a kick from here there's no voltage or nothing switches on the transistors the transistors are switched on from the coils off this transformer and then they'll oscillate after that and normally this will try and do that and you'll hear a chirp every time that it tries to start up but it wasn't even doing that so it did look like the fault was here but it transpired that actually this these two transistors here the two main drivers the 40 q40 this one here the transistors were fine but the diode across here had gone uh, slightly shorted in one direction and the diode direction which is was unusual and it's not a dead short it sounds like an okay diode except it's an okay diode in both directions and that was preventing this transformer from oscillating at all and because that wouldn't oscillate at all, there was no uh, no voltage appeared on here. Once that was replaced, uh, it was started to kind of chirp, so it was trying to start up. So looking at the actual power supply, I've got it here with the covers all removed. Uh, so we can identify some of the parts. So we've got mains in here, so we've got the big capacitors sitting beneath here. These four screws actually hold the capacitors in. Uh, so mains rectified there. And when we have the actual oscillator part here, so these are the two driver transistors, um, just the filters from the DC coming in. And then there's a underneath here is the resonant uh, LC circuit. Uh, these are the two connections to that. This is part of the, well, the high voltage shutdown part of the circuit. And this little transformer here is the actual inverter transformer. So it's a very small part, but it's the part that generates the, the frequencies for running the, the, the main uh, transformer, which is actually under here. So this is our normal mains transformer uh, for all the supplies, which come onto this board, which is our DC board. We have our startup uh, UJT here. So these two transistors here form part of the protection circuit. This is a test point for the 108 volts, actually. Um, but these two, I've got these two transistors on sockets. Um, if you remove these, then it prevents the protection circuit shutting down the supply, but you have to then watch. There's only protection then for over voltage on the inverter. These are controlled by Logic and particularly this custom chip here. This is a custom Tektronix chip, which uh, is unobtainable now, which is a bit of a scary thing. Uh, it's socketed, so I think it is known to go. Uh, but in this case, it's all working and that's fine. So all I need to really do is start reassembling bits and pieces. So this is the high voltage cover on the driver transistors, which can go back on again. after all these blown parts uh, so say a bit of an issue trying to track this down this these transistors tend to go um, one tends to go by itself and if you stop it and look for the fault that'll be fine if you keep pushing it then one will be short and when it if you do fire up the other is also then switching onto a short and then it blows parts that's why i've actually blown parts uh, but otherwise we've had uh, the diodes go short or partly short or the uh, devices themselves and there's no kind of evidence of why um, why it would do that uh, I've had to replace some of these these have to, they have to equivalent electronics are difficult from the point of view they have their own part numbers but they are standard parts if you can cross-reference them okay now I've got the power supply connected back into the electronics here so all the plugs are back in um, it's kind of hanging out at a funny angle because I've also got the scope probe on it and I'm measuring the voltage at the test point which should be 108 volts when it's all working as I say I've got the uh, controls transistors removed at the moment so I can bring this up on a variac 
uh, and try and see if we get the voltage to stabilize them. Okay, we've got this on. Right, it's starting to oscillate there. We have actually a power on here, but the voltage is... You can hear the fan on the thing running. So this time the trace is slightly different because we now have the the automatic uh, voltage control. So the, the Tektronics IC is now regulating the supply here rather than on the Variac. So we have this uh, this extra these pulses. I think are the control circuitry modulating. Seems fairly stable. With faults like these, you start to think you're losing your mind. As I say, these. Uh, this, this transistor keeps kind of blowing either base to emitter or emitter collector uh, and it does so just quietly it doesn't in the, the power supply just stops working so it's been very difficult to try and track things down so I was starting to think about breakdown on the circuit board and the PCB or something else causing it because uh, I noticed there was a bit of jitter on this line at one point um, where the oscillator is so there's also um, this is actually a coaxial um, wound coil with the, an outer the coax connected to the the well, the ground here but this ground is actually the minus V uh, as is the casing uh, around this as well so took the casing apart and um, there's a possibility that this wire here was pressed against the casing uh, it may have been causing a little bit of breakdown in here uh, and that might have led to seeing the the jitter on the um, the supply anyway i've just moved the wires out of the way and, and and put it together again and so far that seems to have solved the problem so it looks like things are okay the, this has been soak tested about an hour it's been on and off a number of times no more faults power supplies held up um, everything's working so I think I'm quite happy it's good to have it back that's the difference between the filament and LED so it's pretty much acceptable so thanks for watching